Hey, what is up? Welcome to season five of the Mindshare podcast. I'm your host, David Greenspan. We have an exciting lineup planned for you this season, including new guests across a variety of industries, along with some more time for just you and I to spend, you know, talking and learning about a whole bunch of different topics throughout the year. We've also got some new sponsors who've jumped on board with us this year. This list includes Gray Media, Ontario's premier social media management, marketing, and content creation company. REM, Real Estate Magazine, Canada's premier monthly magazine for real estate professionals. And Kids Keep In Touch Systems, a two-time international award-winning marketing suite for sales professionals. Be sure to check out our sponsors and what they have to offer on our site at Mindshare101.com. Now, I have a question for you. How are those holiday gifts? Did you receive any? Was anything like like really, really exciting? Or were they just kind of nice? I'm asking because I have an idea for you. Why don't you treat yourself to a trip in Mexico? I mean, I'm talking a complete business write-off, including white sandy beaches, palm trees, hot weather, great food, amazing people, drinks being served to you while you're lying on the beach And working all at the same time. I mean, picture it. You're building your empire from this hot tropical destination. Now that's the life. I'm inviting you to join us on April 16th in the Mayan Riviera for a week of learning and relaxation. You're going to learn how to achieve the elusive work-life balance that everyone so badly desires. How to tackle everything you need to do in a day. How to prioritize what you need to do in a day. What the most important parts of your day really are and how to ensure you wake up determined and go to bed satisfied each and every single day. This is going to be your transformation into a more powerful version of you. One who's going to be able to handle anything that comes your way. One that's going to think and operate on the next level. One who will feel good about who they are. Go to myshare101.com forward slash retreat for all the details. Spots are limited, so do not wait. And as we embark on season five of the show, I want to thank you for continuing to tune in. I want to share with you that because of you, we finished 2022 as one of the top 25 marketing podcasts on iTunes. I am so grateful. Your reviews mean the world to us, and we're certainly getting closer to our goal of 100. So please take a moment to rate and leave a review of our show. You can go to ratethispodcast.com forward slash mindshare 101. And as an added bonus, your name will be entered into a draw to win some free Mindshare 101 swag. And just before we get into the show, looking ahead to everything that's in store for us this year, I want to start the year off by shouting out every single one of my one-to-one coaching clients. In fact, all of my coaching clients. I mean, you know who you are. This is one of your reminders about all the work that we put in last year to achieve what we did and all of the work that we put in the past couple of months to prepare for right now. And the 52 weeks ahead of us, you know what you need to do now. Now it's just a matter of doing it one day at a time, one hour at a time. That is how we smash those goals that we set. And look, the distractions, they will always present themselves. Both you and I both know that, well, you've got goals that you want to achieve. And we put the plan in place for how we're going to bring those to, to, the, to life. So stay focused. Stay driven. I am so super pumped for what's in store for you this year. You see, our Mindshare one-to-one coaching program is like no other coaching program available. This isn't some cookie cutter approach. This isn't a sign up to work with me, but work with someone else thing. This is a completely custom tailored plan to ensure you achieve. You work with me throughout this whole process. We saw huge growth in our clients this past year, and I want to help you see the same in you this year. Whether you're new or a veteran in the business, our one-to-one coaching is your answer. Inquire with us today. Just go to MindShow101.com, click on Coaching, and one of our MindShow Experience Coordinators will be in touch within the hour. Today's episode is number 212. Now, as we look ahead to 2023 and we talk about how to conquer 2023, it's got to start right now. Like if, if it hasn't started for you already, as you're listening to this episode right now, I want you to get locked and loaded. I want you to understand that as you walk away from this episode in a few minutes from now, 
maybe 30, 45, 60 minutes from now. We'll figure that out when we get to the end. But when you walk away from this one, I want you to think to yourself, I feel more ready. I feel more driven. I know what I need to do. Now, as we talk about the top three things that you're going to have to do in 2023 in order to win, here's what they are. Number one is to stay focused. Stay focused on what you want to achieve. Stay focused on what your plans are, what your goals are. Cut out the distractions. Be disciplined. Understand that in order to get to where we want to, there are things that we're going to need to do day in and day out, no matter how we feel. There's going to be plans that we put in place, things that we think about that we need to execute on. And no matter what, we've got to have the discipline to get them done. We've got to know where they fall into our routine. We've got to know when we're going to do them. Discipline in order to get to where we want is imperative. And consistency. Consistency is the magic ingredient to achieving anything you want in life. Anything. You've got to be consistent with those efforts. You've got to be consistent with tracking your goals. You've got to be consistent with understanding that there will be ups and downs in life. But as long as we stick to the plan, as long as we do some of these things day in and day out, no matter what kind of results we got the day before, we will begin to achieve. I mean, again, I say this all the time. You've got to shoot to score. And if you think you're going to score on every shot you take, you are sadly mistaken. Instead, understand, the more you shoot, the more you score. Much the same, the less you shoot, the less you score. And this is where, again, consistency comes in. There's got to be certain actions that we take on a daily basis. We're going to get into those in a moment. On a daily basis that we do so that the more we do them, the more they will start to become the results of what we want, the success of what we want. You see, as you're starting your new year, and again, whether you've fully been rocking since like Jan 1 when that clock hit 12, or maybe it's taking you a little bit of time to get, you know, over the holiday hangover. Now, look, I'm not much of a golfer, but I used this analogy the other day with a client, and I thought, you know, this really makes sense. And if you're a golfer, you're going to completely understand this. And if you're not a golfer, I want you to think about something that you love in life. Okay, maybe uh, an extracurricular activity, maybe a sport, a pastime, something that you spend time doing on a regular basis. I'm going to use golf, though, for the example, okay? Now, personally for me, I'm more like the Happy Gilmore type of golfer. Um, Part of my, my whole thing here, I think, would be that, you know, golfers, when the weather's nice, they see the green. Well, for me, when the weather's nice and the skies are blue, I'm seeing asphalt. I just want to get on the Harley. I want to ride. So I don't spend a lot of time golfing. But as an avid hockey player, an avid baseball player, I consider myself athletic. I consider myself able. And so in the odd time that I do decide to go golfing, I, I, can, I can hold my own to some degree. Now, for me, and I'm sure like much like any other golfer, when you step up to the first tee, the pressure's on. Like you're at the first tee. The person controlling who goes up to, you know, start their round or whatever, you know, which, which foursomes go in next, the timing, you know, that person, like captain or whatever they call that person there. They tell you it's time to go. So you go. But you also know there's possibly a group right behind you that's watching you tee off. So, I mean, the first hole, the first tee is always like the biggest pressure tee. I mean, Again, this comes from a guy who doesn't consider himself, you know, a golfer, but I do have my own clubs. I got my golf shoes. I, I know how to hit a ball. But I always think about that tee as like the pressure, right? Now you walk up to the tee. You get yourself all ready. You know that everybody's staring at you. And it's time to tee off. Now, one of two things happens. You either tee off and like you absolutely smash that ball and it goes straight down the fairway and you just feel like a champ. You're feeling good. Yeah. Or <laughs> you walk up to that tee and you completely shank it. Like it, it either like slices way off to the right, cuts over to the left, goes in the bush, or maybe you like whiff on the ball. You kind of like fan over top of it and it like lands three feet from the tee. What kind of feeling is that? 
I mean, we've got two different feelings, right? One is like straight down the fairway, feeling like a champ. The other one's like three feet from the tee, and you kind of, <laughs> you kind of feel to yourself like, oh man, that was not the start I was looking for. Well, let's fast forward. Say the hole's a par four. And I mean, again, for golfers, you get it. For non-golfers, that would mean that you've got like basically four shots to like sink that ball in the hole. And you've done what they said you should do on like a par four. And if you do anything less than four, maybe do it in two or you do it in three. It's a good thing, right? Well, let's say again, you have that big, long drive straight down the fairway. When you go for your second shot, how are you feeling at that time? Probably feeling really good, right? Feeling ready, feeling ready to play. Feeling like you... You, you know, you're on top of the world. Meanwhile, your partner who just dropped it like three feet from the tee while well, you're looking going, <laughs> please, I'm on him or her. Yeah, not such a good start. Now you go and you finish that hole and you finish with, let's say, a three. I think they call that a birdie. See, see, but I'll tell you, I could talk to you about riding roads. I could talk to you about Harleys, but anyways, well, we'll keep rolling here. So stay with me, right? So you get a birdie on the first hole. When you get to the second hole, how do you feel? Probably feel good. You feel confident. You feel ready to go. Meanwhile, your friend over there, who again dropped that ball three feet from the tee, probably isn't feeling as good as you are, right? Well, okay. Now you get to the second hole and it's time to tee off again. And so the story continues. And we have a very similar type of outcome or the options of the outcome. We either really crush it and everything's going really, really well. Or, eh, wasn't the best swing, wasn't the best drive, wasn't the best putt. And now all of a sudden the confidence isn't as high. Now, I often say, and I've said many times before, that confidence breeds success. And success breeds confidence. Well, let me bring this back to sort of what we call everyday life. Say that you've got a plan, okay? And you've got a plan for what you want to accomplish in a day. You got a plan for what you want to accomplish in a week. You got a plan for what you want to accomplish in a month and in a year. The only way to achieve that is to stay really, really focused. Okay. Again, is to be focused, is to have the discipline, is to stay consistent. And of course, the golfer was very focused on the first tee. The golfer might have been disciplined to, you know, accomplish whatever they wanted. And well, the consistency of, you know, maybe practice has helped them be better. But when I bring up the golf analogy, please understand what I'm talking about is like that first, first moment where you either tee off and have a really good drive or it just completely flows flat. What does that do to set the tone for the next hole? Let me bring this back now and bring this back to where we go here. What I'm talking about instead of holes, instead of golf, I'm talking about days. I'm talking about life. When one day starts the right way, And you go about that day and you accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. And that day ends and you've done a lot of good out there. How do you feel at the end of the night? No doubt. You probably say, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling ready. And as you roll into the next day, how do you feel? No doubt. You're probably thinking, hey, I feel good. Felt really confident off yesterday. I think I could do that again today. Consistency. Staying focused. Being disciplined with what you need to accomplish. And as the sort of, you know, it all continues and you're doing this day after day after day and you're feeling good and you get everything done in a day and you move on to the next day. Well, day after day, you're feeling accomplished. You're feeling like you're getting things done. You're feeling like you're going to the place that you want to go to. And that is how we have even more success. One day at a time. When you can track your day, When you know exactly what you want to accomplish and you get it done, no matter about the ups and downs that happen in that day, because they're always going to happen. But when you get it done, you walk away from that day having the confidence of the world. And that, that is how you roll into the next day. That is how you win the next day. Now, this is all about choices. Okay. You've got a choice right now. As you're listening to this podcast, you've got a choice right now of how you want this year to end. And I'm taking you all the way to the end of the year already. I want you to picture that. I want you to sit there at the end of 2023, and I want you to look back on these past 12 months and ask yourself, how did I feel? Now, maybe you're having flashbacks from 
how you felt just a couple weeks ago. Maybe you felt on top of the world, and I want you to ride that right now into the new year. Maybe it didn't feel so good. Like it, 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 didn't, it didn't pan out the way you wanted it to. And look, again, there's got always going to be ups and downs. But as you fast forward and look at the end of this year, and then you look back to where you are today, the question becomes, what are you doing each and every single day to have the success that you want so that at the end of this year, when you're standing there looking back, you feel good. And the same analogy we just used from one hole to another in golf or from one day to another in life, I'm going to even say it's the same thing year over year. When you end off an amazing year, you give yourself the opportunity to walk into another amazing year. Much the same, if you ended off last year and you were not feeling the way you wanted to, I'm telling you right now, this episode, right now, tune in and stay focused. I mean, I know you're here. We're about 15 minutes in and you're still here, so this is a good thing. And I thank you. (laughs) But stay focused. It's a choice. You have a choice whether you're going to achieve. You have a choice whether you want to stay focused. You have a choice to what you want to accomplish. And it's your choice, nobody else's, whether or not you get there. It's your choice how you wake up in a day. It's your choice how you move throughout your day. And it's very much your choice whether you achieve in a day, a week, a month, and a year. Don't give me the oh, but. We all got oh, buts. We all got things that don't go right or the way we want them to. Such is life. Life's a bitch. But throw that shit out the window and let's stay focused because we got an entire year ahead of us. Now, here's the reality, too. I mentioned off the top about all the planning that I do with my coaching clients, right? And for all of those individuals that put the plan in place prior to the new year, I am confident that with the right work ethic, the right system, the right process, and everything that at least I've worked on with my clients, we are going to have an incredible, incredible year. It's going to be amazing. Like, like blow the socks off. Now, there's so many other people out there. In fact, most people, most people didn't do jack shit. Like, most people didn't plan. Most people might have thought about it. I mean, no, I'd say most people didn't even think about it. Most people just kind of go like, what are we going to do for the holidays? You know, what kind of gifts are we going to, you know, exchange? Um, Where are we partying for New Year's? Where are we going on vacation? How much time can I take off? How many, you know, where, where, when can I sleep in? That's what most people do. But that's why most people don't achieve. That's why most people will fall off any type of resolution or solution or goal or whatever they want to call that title. They will fall off this, this, this idea of like earning and getting and doing by mid-January. And then for the people that don't fall off by mid-January, they're going to fall off by mid-February. Like most people fall off. See, our people don't fall off because we've got a plan. We know exactly what we want to do. But understand that, okay? If you are that person that has goals, most people are going to fail by mid-February. Like m- most everybody. Do you want to be one of those people? I know you're shaking your head no right now. I know you're saying to yourself right now, no, that's not going to be me. I'm not going to fall off. I'm not that person. But most people are. In order for you not to be that person, it's going to take focus. It's going to take dedication and discipline. It's going to take consistency of your efforts, no matter how you feel. Whether it's pouring rain in your life or it's sunshine and lollipops, you better get up and at it. That's the difference. The minute people are told no, they start to crumble. The minute people don't feel like doing it, they stop. But those are the moments. Those are the moments that you need to keep yourself going. Those are the moments that you got to drive yourself and stay focused on what you're trying to accomplish. Because when you stay focused on what you're trying to accomplish, no matter what happened, it's going to be next to impossible to bring you down. I mean, I live it. I breathe it every day. I'm trying to work to instill this in my clients every single day. And for those that have, it's incredible to watch the success that they've had. And yeah, as we look back to last year, sure, 
I mean, look, look back to 2022 versus 2021 and forget about all the other bullshit going on in our world. I'll tell you, some people made some, some ridiculous amounts of money in 21. Goals were set incredibly high for 2022. There was a lot of people that did some incredible stuff in 22. But there was so many more that did not hit that income goal. They made a lot. They just didn't hit the goal that they wanted to hit. And if you're sitting there going, yeah, that was me. Understand you're not alone. Understand this as well, though. You can't control the market. You just have no control over it. Rates going up, prices going down, things sitting around longer. You have zero control. Well, I mean, you have zero control of the market. But you definitely have control over what you do every single day. Monday starts on Sunday. When you prepare yourself, you look ahead and you sit there tonight, okay? Tonight. And you start mapping out what has to happen tomorrow. Where am I going to be? When am I going to be there? What do I have to do? How much has to be done? Who do I have to do it with? What do I have to do to prepare for all that stuff? When you do that, now you start to have a plan for how you're going to operate. In fact, as we talk about goals, we talk about choices, we talk about preparation and focus and discipline. How are you taking care of you today? You you, you know what? As I say that, I want to give you a big, like sort of big, like fist pump right now. Okay. Because straight up, how are you taking care of you today? I'll tell you right now. You listen to this podcast and I know a little bit of like a, you know, a little check mark for us, David, over here at the Mindshare team, like fine, but that's not the point. That's not what that was about. You could be listening to any podcast right now. You could be watching a video right now. I'm not talking like a YouTube video or like a TikTok video or Instagram video that tells you nothing. I'm talking about something that's going to feed your brain. You could be reading a book. When you feed your brain on a daily basis, and, and, and again, you've heard me say it before, and I'm going to say it again, 30 minutes, that's all I'm encouraging you to do. And you want to do more, do more. You got the time to do more, do more. 30 minutes a day to focus on you. Okay, focus on feeding your brain. So the question I got, Did you schedule to listen to this podcast into your calendar today? And if you did, again, fist pump. If you didn't, but you're here, hey, I'll still give you a fist pump. I love the fact that you listen to the show. That said, this time should be scheduled. Like, why did you just decide to pick up and listen to a podcast right now? What in your schedule told you that this is the moment to do this? How are you tracking that you did this? Now, if you're wondering, why should I track that? Well, because I personally, let me give you an example here. I have a goal. I've got many goals, but one of my goals in a year, one of my goals is to read 24 books a year. 24. That's two books a month. In my mind, incredibly possible. Now, it all depends on the length of the book. You know, some some months I might read three. Some months I might read one. And I'll tell you, in 2022, I actually finished with 19 books. So I didn't hit my goal. I was five books shy, but I finished reading 19 books in the month, in in the year of 2022. Now, I feel good about that. I spent hours upon hours feeding my brain, learning from incredible stories, uh, true stories, biographies, business books, mindset books, you know, you name it trying to make me better, trying to make me better at what I do and how I am and who I am when I look in the mirror, also trying to make me better within my craft and how I help other people. I spend time learning. I spend time feeding my brain. I want to continue getting better. I want to win. And that's what I'm trying to share with you right now. Is every single day, you should have at least 30 minutes in your schedule to work on you, to work on your brain, to feed your brain. The mental side of life. So from this day forward, I want to encourage you and don't tell me you don't have time. That's a bunch of bullshit. But do you have time to scroll social media? You have time to 
to aimlessly watch TV? Don't get me wrong. I'm all about downtime. I'm all about vegging out. But it's got to be at the right moment. It's got to be when you know that you've accomplished, you've achieved something. You can't just do it for the sake of doing it. Otherwise, you're wasting time. So every day from this day forward, I want to encourage you to put 30 minutes of learning time in your schedule. Every day from this day forward, I want you to track that learning time and ask yourself, how much did I feed my brain today? And as you stay focused, as you stay disciplined to that process, as you track it all and you're consistent with it, you're just going to naturally start to feel better. You're going to feel smarter. You're going to feel like your thoughts have more creativity to them. You're going to feel better in business. You're going to feel better in life. And although reading a book may not be a direct income producing activity, the reality is reading those books and feeding your brain, that is the biggest income producing activity you could possibly do. Now, as I ask you if you're taking care of you today, and I suggest reading, I'm going to back up the mental with the physical. How much time do you have in your day scheduled? I'm talking real time scheduled that says, this is what I'm going to take care of me. The physical stuff. You could go right to the extreme and go to the gym and be, you know, pumping weights. You could keep it real simple and go outside, you know, for a 20 or 30 minute walk. We're talking about being active. Getting the heart pumping, making the limbs move. Right? Taking care of your physical. Think about it. If you don't take care of physical right now, maybe you eat poorly or you just, you know, your sleep patterns are poor or maybe you're just not taking care of you. There's no way in the world your, your body is feeling optimized. There's no way in the world that your body's feeling like it's in tip top shape. You know it. I know it. And look, for me, I made a massive change, massive change for myself in, well, last year. See, off the top of the year, I had a plan. I wanted to work out, I think it was 104 times. 104, pretty simple, two times a week. Not, not, not crazy. But throughout the year, I realized that although I was getting some of these workouts in and I was playing my hockey and doing my thing, there was a moment and it was the end of the summer, August. I was up at my buddy's cottage I sat there thinking to myself, we were having beers and we were, we were eating poorly and throwing all sorts of meat on the fires and cook stuff. And just like, it just didn't stop. And this was a summer full of enjoyment. But let me tell you, I got to the end of that summer thinking, oh my God, man, I got to do something here. I finally got fed up. And on August 30th, I went over to the gym down the street from my house and I got myself a membership. I bit the bullet and I spent the money. Paying like $109 a month or something. I got unlimited access. I got towel service, all these classes I could do for free, whatever lockers and things. But August 30th, that happened. And August 30th, I called a friend of mine, a friend of mine who had motivated me beyond motivation for the change that he's made in his physical self. I called him up and I said, hey, I got a membership to the gym. He goes, oh, buddy, like, congrats. I'm like, yeah, perfect, man. But like, I, I don't know what to do. He goes, okay, I'm coming over. And he came straight over. We spent about an hour talking and he broke down this whole workout routine. So I started creating like my routine. Anyhow, fast forward. The next day, September 1st, it took focus and it took discipline to get my ass up and go to the gym. And let me tell you, I went and I felt amazing. Like so amazing that I wanted to go back again the next day. And then the next day and the next day and every single day that I would finish, I'd go over to my goals because I track everything and I'd mark off that I went and slowly, but surely I was doing a lot more than two times a week, eight times a month. I started going to the gym three, four, five times a week. And from September 1st, call it even August 30th, 2022, the mission began. We were on a mission, pardon me, I was on a mission, I am on a mission to continue to get myself into better physical shape because I know when my physical is rocking and my mental is rocking, well, I'm going to be a very, very hard person to take down, both mentally, both physically, in business, in life, personally, 
emotionally, the mental and the physical are going, again, you're going to have a hard time beating me. And yeah, this attitude, this personality you get from me, this is legit. This is who I am. And the reason I am this person is one, because I get to help so many people and I watch the successes they have. So I'm confident in the approach we take. I'm more than confident. Much the same though, if I wasn't taking care of me physically and mentally, I'm not this same guy. So although again, the physical and the mental are not direct income producing activities that are making me money, feeding the bottom line, money is not, money is not the most important thing in life. Fast forward to your final days in life. I mean, let's not speed that up too much, but, and not that any of us are there right now, but I do want you to think about that for a second. I want you to think about what people answer when they mark that, when they talk about that stuff. What do, what do you wish you had done more of? Nobody says, I wish I made more money. People always talk about how they wish they spent more time with family and loved ones. They always talk about how they wish they took care, better care of themselves. So the question I have for you here is, do you prioritize money over everything? Over taking care of you? And look, I'll tell you again, I love money. I love money. I want to make more money and more money and more money. If I don't take care of me, it doesn't matter how much I love it. I'm not making more of it. And on the flip side, if I'm making more and more and more and more and more, well, we know for a fact that the personal side, both with family and loved ones and friends, and even you looking in the mirror, we know that's going to take a toll. That's going to take a hit. That's not going to be optimized. So again, the balance, right? Where do I feel better? What makes me feel more fulfilled? Is it just making money or is it spending time with family and loved ones? Is it taking care of self? So again, I want to encourage you right now. Taking care of you is of the utmost importance. When you are spending time with family and friends is of the utmost importance. And as we talk about goals, when we talk about conquering 2023, I want you to make you time a priority. I'm encouraging you, try it, change up those habits, make the right choice, do it for you, do it for your family, do it for your longevity, do it for your peace of mind and track it all. Okay. Track every single piece of it. I know exactly how many books I read. I know exactly how much time I spend reading. I know exactly how many workouts I've done this year, which by the way, we talked about doing a hundred and four workouts in 2022. I finished the year off with 183. Yeah. (laughs) Talk about crushing it. Talk about feeling incredible. And yes, every single time I finished a workout, I'd go back to my goal sheet and I track the fact that I did it. So it went from one to the next day being two to the next day being three. I stayed focused and disciplined to the process. The consistency kicked in. And I'll tell you, I feel incredible right now. So again, physical time and mental time needs to be scheduled. You need to track it so that you can feel good. When you do that, that will make you feel even better than all the money you made. Now, the other thing to be tracking, speaking of making money, is how much mind share we're building. Think about this, okay? And if, you, if you're a regular listener of Mindshare, you've heard me say this, but there's only seven ways to communicate with other people. We've only got two audiences out there. So it's really, really crucial that we're leveraging all seven ways to communicate. We're, again, disciplined to the fact of when do those emails need to go out. We're disciplined to the fact that we're going to prep the content we want to put on social. We're going to schedule what time we want to go on social tomorrow. We're going to work within that time frame of what we schedule because we're going to, again, empower time to manage us. We cannot manage time. And at that time in our schedule, we're going to go ahead and do the post. We're going to act with purpose and we're going to get out within the time frame that we allotted to do it. 
not just the random scrolling, because the average person spending about three hours on social media in a day. And let me tell you, that is not working towards your goals. Your newsletters, when do they have to go out? Your website, is it up to date? Your phone calls. In fact, the top three things that you're going to want to really focus on in 2023 for your marketing to build Mindshare. One is video. Okay, the world just continues to embrace video more and more and more. And I am not suggesting, and I got to tell you, this past holiday season with all the holiday parties going on, which has just been such a breath of fresh air that there's more of those happening. But they got those 360 cameras where people jump on this little platform and they kind of like, you know, they dance as the camera kind of goes around you. I mean, I think the effect is kind of cool, but oh my God, the people that I saw dancing on these things, people that I know that I'm thinking, what the hell are you doing? What, why are you doing that? And look, don't get me wrong. If you're just having fun, it's one thing. But if you think that all of a sudden you dancing just because everybody else is dancing to build up their brand is like the way you build your brand. I mean, that right there is the definition of a sheeple mentality. And if you want to win, you cannot be a sheeple. You got to stand out. You got to be different. You got to be focused on you. So again, back to the three, three sort of, you know, top things for marketing that I want you to focus on. One is video. Get yourself comfortable with it. Get more of it out there. Put it out on reels. Put it out on your different social channels. You could take video. You could put it out on emails. You could put it out on your website. But video turns a picture, you know, it, it, Video turns a picture into a thousand words. Video, video brings your picture to life. Video gives people the ability to see who you are, hear who you are, get a sense of who you are, leverage it. Another one here, and I really already talked about the seven ways to communicate, but that's probably the big thing I want you to think about. There's always the cross-channel approach. So the second part to marketing here, don't just get into something with one approach, but always think to yourself, how do I support that approach with another? So one channel with the next. And the third part, and again, if you want to read more about the seven ways, uh, download the Ultimate Marketing Bundle. Go over to our website, mindshow101.com. Click on the free download, the Ultimate Marketing Bundle. Completely free, but it'll walk you through all seven ways. And the third part to marketing here, which I really, really want to emphasize for this year, is the one-to-one conversations. Okay, one-to-one. I'm not talking sending a quick text message. Oh, yeah, but my clients like to be texted. No, no, no. Your clients may just like, that's what they tell you. The reality is this, no matter what people tell you, the reality is this, the phone call will always give you more opportunity to learn. The phone call will always put you in a position to create a deeper relationship, a deeper connection with somebody else. Don't shy away from the phone. The same way people gave up on direct mail and sending out, you know, handwritten cards because they think sending an email, you know, does, uh, saves them money, maybe hits more people at one time, you know, it's just easier. Well, yeah, that, there's the problem because it got easier to send the email or just say it on Facebook. People stopped with a handwritten note, but let's go the other way. When you get a handwritten note, how does it feel? Doesn't it feel nice? What about all those holiday cards that you just received? Didn't they feel nice? A little warm and fuzzies. And we know that most people didn't send them, but for the people that did, it felt good. See, so the one-to-one communication is huge. That's where you win. That's where you develop deeper relationships with people. And when the relationships get deeper, the trust becomes established. And when the trust is established, what else comes? Ah, opportunities. If you don't have trust, those opportunities don't come. So you got to be focused. Connecting with people on a daily basis. Our business is all about people. What we do for a living needs to incorporate other people. So think about those one-to-one conversations. Think about leveraging all seven ways to communicate. Think about incorporating more video into your strategy. That is how you build your brand. That is how you build Mindshare. Make those a goal. Okay, so we talked about the reading. We talked about the physical. I've already explained to you about empowering time to manage you. Make your income-producing activities, all of that marketing stuff, a goal. So here, if we talk about goals, how much money do you want to earn this year? Write that down. Then we talk about, let's say, deals. How many deals do you want to do this year? Write that down. 
Then I ask you about IPAs, income producing activities. How many people are, gonna, are you going to add to your database this year? And I'll tell you straight up 365. It should be no brainer. How many email blasts are you going to send out to your database this year? I'm going to tell you that should, number should be 24 to a month. How many social media posts? Depending on your level of activity on social, if you post once a week, I'm going to encourage you to push that up to twice a week. If you're seven days a week, I'm going to encourage you, leverage notes, leverage stories, get more involved, have more conversations with people. Phone calls. How many phone calls are you going to do this year? I'll tell you, it should be three to five a day. It's your contact list. Say what's up. You can do a blog, a vlog, maybe once a month, once a week. What is it? Mark it down. Maybe you said you want to go out and you want to door knock and get to know other people in the, in the areas. Okay, cool. How many? How often? Mark it down. The income producing activities, they need a goal. Okay, they need a goal and they need to be quantified. So I want to make more money. We'll call that income. There's the goal. Quantifying it is how much money. I want to make a dollar. I want to make a million dollars. What is that number? So here, picture the goal as the address. Then I want you to take the goal and I want you to map it into your schedule. I want you to picture your schedule as your navigation. See, when you take the address and you punch it in the navigation, you follow the navigation. Should be pretty simple to get to the address, right? Like to our final destination, right? Address goes to navigation, follow navigation, get to the address. Done. We achieved. What's no different for our goals? This is exactly how you do it. This is how you conquer 2023. This is how you stay consistent, focused, and disciplined on everything you want to achieve. Mark down the goal. Quantify the goal. Since you come up with the address. Then map that into your schedule, the navigation, and follow the plan. 7 a.m. do this, 7.30 do that, 8 a.m. to 8.30 do this, 8.30 to 9.30 do that, 9.30 to 10 take a break, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock do this. Write down the day in the life of you. Figure out exactly what you do and where you spend your time. Be realistic with yourself. Okay, have this open and honest conversation with yourself and then look for the efficiencies. And those efficiencies will be you going into your schedule and mapping it out. The same way when we talk about the personal stuff, when are you going to read? When are you going to work out? Oh, you want to go on vacations this year, do you? Great. How many? Where? When? I want to lose weight. Excellent. How much? That also means an action step needs to be, I'm going to work out. Perfect. How many workouts are you going to do? Maybe you got a significant other. What about day nights? Okay. How many are you going on for that? What else do you want to achieve in life? Again, remember, the goal is the address. Your calendar is your navigation. Mark down the goals, quantify the goals, and make sure to map those out. Monday starts on Sunday. Every day starts the night before. Again, this is how you wake up determined and go to bed satisfied. And look, don't get me wrong, right? Distractions are going to happen all the time. Distractions are going to be what take you away from you being who you want to be. Think about this one. Every time you open up social media, every time you open up email, every time you do something that is not in your schedule, you had one thing in the schedule, but you made a choice to do something else. You got distracted. You picked up that call. You looked at that notification. You had that conversation with that person, and it wasn't scheduled then what you're doing is you're telling yourself that all of that other noise, all of those other distractions are more important to you or more important in life than you are to you. Yeah. Think about that. It doesn't say it's time to open up social media, yet here you are looking at social media. Why? Do you not have goals? Do you not have things you want to achieve this year? Why is it that that social media post is so much more important? Or is it? Like, is it more important? Is it something you should be focused on right now? I'd say no. 
I say it's taking you away from everything that you want to achieve. And if you've only got so much time in life, so much time in a day, then why are we spending our time there? Instead, spend your time in a different place. Spend your time focused on other things. Spend your time focused on you. Again, look at the schedule and figure what is the schedule saying to me right now? Where should I be? Because if I am looking at something that I'm not supposed to be looking at in a moment that I'm not supposed to be looking at it, then I am not focused on what I want. And then just like I said to you before, take yourself down the road to the end of 2023 right now. Fast forward 52 weeks and ask yourself where you are. Be realistic with why you didn't accomplish what you wanted to accomplish. It's because you didn't prioritize it. It's because you allowed distractions to take the better of you. And I'm talking right down to the whole thing of, hey, you want to achieve a work-life balance, then you better have time for family. You better recognize when that time is. And when that time is, if you're sitting on the couch with your kids per per se or a significant other, whoever, and you're looking down at your phone, then I'll tell you right now, you are not locked in. You are less focused on them than you are on whatever noise, whatever distractions, which you and I will both agree has nothing to do with importance in our life. But you looking at your phone, you're not locked in. And you're not focused on what you want to achieve in life. Better relationships. Better family time. Acknowledge this stuff. This is the important stuff. So we've got to cut out distractions. And we've got to realize that when we do pay attention to the distractions, we are taking away. We are saying those are more important to us than the person we're looking at in the mirror. And if that's hitting home to you right now, then understand that is a change you need to make. Look, preparation is your key to success. Knowing what you need to do in a day and attaching actual times to it so that you know when, you know how long, you know what's next. The days fly fast. And if you don't work to a schedule, you simply will not get it all done. It's not going to happen. And by the time you get to the end of this year, you will not be where you want to be. So here's some action steps for you today, okay? As you're tuned into this, here's some of the things I want you to think about. I want you to focus on. I want you to do. Map out those goals. What do you want to achieve in both life and business this year? Write it down. Quantify it. Include the income producing activities. Include the income. Just as important, if not more importantly, include the personal. The self-development, the physical development, the family time, the vacations, the date nights, the weight, the workouts. Include it. The reading books. Read, put it down. Make sure it's just as much of a priority in your day as all the other things you think you need to be doing to generate more business. Schedule your days. Everything needs a time block. You've only got 24 hours in your day. So create a little list and, and write down a day in the life of you. What time do you normally get up? What do you do when you get up? Do you check social media in your email right away? Because if you do, it's like letting a whole bunch of people into your room while you're still trying to open up your eyes. And they're all screaming and yelling about all the bullshit that's going on in their lives. Why does any of that matter? Schedule. What time are you going to do everything? What time are you going to review your goals? What time are you going to open up your email? What time are you going to check social? What time are you going to have your coffee? What time are you going to spend time with your family? Everything. Write it down. And yeah, that little trip to the the hardware store or the grocery store. Yeah, that's got to be scheduled too. Remember, realistic time. Everything needs a time attached. Everything's going to take time to do. And if you're not structuring it, you will not get it all done. You see, I get more done in a day than most people do in a week. Why? Because Monday starts on Sunday. Because I empower time to manage me. And yes, trust me, when I tell you I love to play hard before I work hard, I certainly do. So do not take this whole idea of time managing me as this, oh, what a boring life, or oh, all you're doing is focus on business. Hell no. I want to enjoy. So I include me time. And I'm telling you right now, as we schedule your days, always be sure to include you time. Because at the end of your day, again, no matter how much money you made, if you did enjoy your day and you did work out and you did feed your brain and you did have fun, you're still going to sit back at the end of the day and go, you know what? That felt good. 
Much the same as you're doing it all, track your efforts, track your results. Like I told you, I wanted to work out 102 times in 2022. I finished at 180 plus. I think it was 182, as I said. Track it, measure it. The same way if you know that you didn't hit the income that you wanted to hit and you look back at the income producing activities like phone calls and social and emails and all the other marketing and meeting people and none of those numbers lined up, well, then they're right there is why you didn't hit your income goal. She is an athlete, and I told you off the top, I'm not a golfer, but I'm a hockey player. I'm a baseball player. I want to win. I love winning. Pucks in the net, runs across the plate. I want to win. In order to win, I got to track what I'm doing. And as I track what I'm doing on a daily basis, every 24 hours, and I'm consistent about my efforts, that's why I win more. That's why I achieve more. And it's not more than anybody else. It's just more than me. Because every day I'm working to be better. And that's exactly what I'm telling you to do. Always think that Monday starts on Sunday. Live it. Breathe it. Own it. That is how you win your new year. That is how you win this year. That is your mindset to conquer 2023. The one thing I ask is at the end of this year, When you follow the process and you've achieved everything you want, just please, please be sure to share it with me. Share with me that it all worked. Share your success story with me because this is why I do it. I just like to help people achieve. I want to help you achieve. Like I want to help you. Knowing it worked I mean, look, as I sit here so confident right now, this is what fuels my fire. This is what what keeps me wanting to bring even more value to help you through whatever comes your way. So I wish you all the best for 2023. I wish you a very, very happy new year to you and yours. On behalf of my Mindshow 101 crew, my entire family, my kids team, I wish you all the best in the world. Follow the process we talked about today. Monday starts on Sunday. Focus on what you want. Stay disciplined to the process. Be consistent. And you are going to conquer 2023. I wish you all the best for this year. Let's do this. You're either listening to this on one of your favorite podcast platforms, or maybe you went to my website, mindshare101.com. And while you're there, be sure to take a moment to learn more about our M3 retreat in the Mine Riviera. Registration is going to be closing soon. Spots are limited, and this is set to be an incredible experience. You you don't want to be the person who had to hear about how amazing it was like after the fact. Do you? (laughs) Check it out today on our site, mindshare101.com forward slash retreat. And a reminder as well that if you want to talk about personalized one-to-one coaching, uh, an in-person keynote talk for your upcoming event, and or ongoing virtual training, just get in touch with me. We'll set up a free consultation call, learn more about what you're looking to achieve and how we will help you do just that. Don't forget to enter your name in the draw to win free swag by simply leaving a review of this podcast at www.ratethispodcast.com forward slash Mindshare 101. And connect with me on Facebook at Mindshare 101 and on Instagram at David Greenspan 101. I want to thank Gray Media, Rem Magazine, and Kits Keep In Touch Systems for sponsoring the Mindshare podcast. Be sure to visit our site to learn more about what these powerful companies will do to help you grow your business. This has been another episode of the Mindshare podcast. Thank you for tuning in.